Now we are looking at a teaching video on quadratic inequalities. We are looking at nature of roots. Now for point one, we need to be able to distinguish or recognize what a quadratic equation is. So the general form will be y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So this is the general form. You can see the degree of the expression is 2. Now if I just remove the term bh, that will still be a quadratic equation. So I remove the constant, that will still be a quadratic equation. Now however, if I remove x squared term, then I will have a linear equation. So we sometimes would have the x term missing, sometimes we have the constant term missing. As long as we have the x squared terms, that equation will be a quadratic equation. So if you look at the roots of the quadratic equation, we are basically looking for how that equation can be solved if y is equal to 0. So the form is this, negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And the b value is taken from the coefficient of x and the a value is taken from the coefficient of x squared and the c value is taken from the constant term of the quadratic equation. And if you look in here, what is inside the square root? We have the expression b squared minus 4ac and that is the discriminant of the quadratic equation. So b squared minus 4ac. Now that is a very important piece of information as we go on later. So point four, we want to state the inequalities involving b squared minus 4ac. Now there are ways to describe the nature of roots. So meaning whether you have two distinct real roots or equal real roots or two real roots or no real roots. For the moment, when you see these phrases, we must be, associ must be able to associate this expression with a certain inequalities. So two distinct real roots will have, if I just simplify this by calling it D for discriminant, then D must be greater than zero. Equal real roots, then D will be equal to zero. If it's not specified, but just two real roots, and you know that this case encompasses the two points on top. Two real roots, there will be two real roots. These equal real roots, what it means is that they are two roots, but they are the same. So in this case, I will combine the two into one. So D is greater or equals to a zero. For the last case, we do not have any real roots. So the discriminant will be less than a zero. Now we look at point five, going back to the 
general solution of quadratic equation we can explain the nature of the roots of different situations. We mentioned before that when we have two distinct real roots, the discriminant is greater than zero. Now, why is it so? You can see if this D is positive. So if it's positive, then I will have two solutions. But which two? So I would have 1 x1 minus b minus square root d over 2a. Then the other solution would be x2 equals to negative b plus square root d over 2a. So there are two distinct solutions. So in the event that the discriminant is equal to zero, we say we have a repeated real roots. That being a zero, we'll have only one solution. The solution is repeated. So the solution is minus b over 2a. Because this portion here will have a zero because square root of a zero is just zero. Now in the last case where this is going to be a negative value and we know that when we use the calculator for square root of negative value we have math mathematical error. So what it means is that we do not have any real value. So, no real solution. So that is when we have a negative value for the discriminant. So all three pure cases are covered. For point 6, we look at the three common phrases for each of the following nature of roots. For the first case, we have discriminant greater than 0. So if I have to graph it, it will be a quadratic curve, whether it is a frowny curve or a smiley curve. And that is all dependent on the A value. So in this case, the A value is less than zero. In this case, the A value is greater than zero. You will have two points of intersection on the x-axis. Of course, if I give you the third situation, a straight line here, two points intersected. Then, the three common phrases you will see in questions most of the time will be two points of intersection or two distinct real roots or we can have two unequal real roots so there are many similar ways of expressing the same thing so once you see these phrases, it should trigger your memory to recall this inequality. That is, b squared minus 4ac greater than 0.
for point B, where we are looking at the discriminant equals to zero, you can see if I have a frowny curve, that is when A is less than a zero or A is a negative value, you have this inverted form. And where you have A greater than zero, you have a smiley graph. But in these two situations, you notice that the curve actually touches the x-axis at a point. I can also have this situation, a slanted straight line, and I have a curve touching at one point. So what we have emphasized here in this particular part is that the curve touches a straight line at one point. And the x-axis and the straight line here are called the tangent to the curve. So the three ways to express that inequality in words will be line, tangent to the curve. So the keyword tangent. Next, we have coincidental real coincidental real roots. Or repeated real roots. So again, whenever we see these common phrases, we should link it back to this equation. That is, the discriminant is equal to a zero. And we know that if we have the graph in our head, then the straight line to the curve is a tangent to the curve. Now we look at the last case where the discriminant is less than a zero. For this arrangement of the curve, you know a is less than a zero or the coefficient of x squared is a negative. So we have an inverted graph or frowny graph. And here, a is greater than a zero, so we have a smiley graph. But in these two situations, the curves are not touching the x-axis. So if the curves are not touching the x-axis, we do not have any real values or, or real roots. So the common phrases that we can think of is this. No intersection points. If you're looking at a curve like that and a straight line just missing it, there's no intersection. Or we can say the curve and the line the straight line do not intersect. So basically, no intersection points. Or we can say, to describe the nature of roots, we have imaginary roots. In some cases, we say complex roots. or unreal roots. So again, these are the common phrases. Once you see this, in your mind, you should see this picture, the graphs. 
and also to be able to recall that the discriminant is less than a zero. So we have covered the breadth of it uh, for the nature of roots. So the important point to take note of is that the key expression D, which is B squared minus 4AC. And this is just part of the um, general solution of the quadratic equation. We come to the end of this video.